studying abroad But you're not sure how and where to go That's why we're here Dream studies abroad To help you out Reaching your goal So many schools from all around the world Are welcoming you with their open doors Live your dreams and travel the world A new journey for the brighter future Let's talk, study abroad today Your dream is not so far Right, annyeonghaseyo, and welcome to this webinar about studying Korea. Uh, in, in this webinar, uh, we will have a closer look at the following. Uh, first, we will look a bit uh, at dream studies, who we are and how we can help you to study in Korea. Uh, then we will look at what you can study in Korea, different schools and programs, costs and scholarships, visa for studying in Korea, accommodation options, and finally, how to apply to study in Korea. Uh, and this picture you see here is one that I took the last time I visited Korea a couple of years ago. It's a Korean barbecue, very typical traditional food with a big bowl of kimchi and garlic in the front there. That's one of the many good things with Korea is the fantastic food that they offer. So let's go. Uh, my name is Johanna Splund uh, and I'm from Sweden, which you might hear. I'm not a na native English speaker, but I hope you can follow me. Uh, and I've studied abroad in five different countries myself. I did a high school year in the US, uh, university semester in the UK, and I've done short language courses in, uh, in uh, Germany, in Spain and in Japan. Uh, and I have helped students to study abroad since 2002. So I've helped thousands of students to study abroad through the years. And I worked with Korean universities since 2010. So I've been in Korea almost every year since 2010, except of course the last years now with the pandemic and all. Uh, and I have visited many different universities there, talked to many students in Korea, visited different accommodations, been guest speaker at different conferences there and helped hundreds of students to study in Korea, which is what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, and I founded my current company, Dream Studies, back in 2016. And um, our main address is dreamstudiesabroad.com. And why should you use us? Well, to begin with, we provide you with free information about studying abroad. Regardless of where you want to study in the world, you can find a lot of resources at dreamstudiesabroad.com. And we have a school database with thousands of universities and schools abroad. So you can search for schools in the country where you want to study, find links and find the schools. Uh, we give, have a FAQ section where you can ask questions about uh, studying abroad. We have some 75 different articles and guides about how to study abroad, how to choose a school abroad, uh, how to study in Korea, how to study in Japan, how to study in the US, all different kind of countries. Uh, we offer many webinars just like this one. We have a lot of videos about studying abroad. You can find the student study abroad insurances and the many other resources at dreamstudiesabroad.com, all free of charge. And our help is totally risk-free. Uh, when you study in Korea, we can actually help you with the application process but you never pay anything to us. You pay directly to the schools where you will study. So that way it's totally risk-free. Um, and we can help you with, to choose a suitable school in Korea, and we can help you uh, with the application to selected schools in Korea. And uh, we can also help out with partial scholarships and discounts to schools around the world, far from all schools. And you always will need your own funding, but many of our partner schools offer discounts on the tuition fee or scholarships to students from Dream Studies. So what can you study in Korea? Basically, these are the programs that we can help you with. Korean language courses, which is the usual starting point if you study in Korea. Many, most university programs in Korea are taught in the Korean language, which means you have to learn Korean first. Because even if they teach some of the courses in English, usually 
um, there will still be some courses taught in Korea if you take like a full bachelor's degree. So Korean language courses is the most common start. And you can also go to Korea just for language courses if you want to experience the country for a while. It's also possible to do bachelor degrees in English, but um, yeah, the selection is much more narrow, as you will see. And you can also do study abroad semesters in English uh, where you study, yeah, say one or two semesters and can choose your courses. We will have a closer look at all of this. And of course, it's also possible to do master programs. We can't help you with master programs in English, but uh, I'm sure there are some of those offered in Korea as well. So let's start with Korean language courses. Uh, this is what we would recommend if you want to live in Korea for a longer period of time to study there, for example. It's really good to start by learning the language because your life will be so much easier. The Korean language is the key to the Korean culture. So if you want to go to Korea primarily based on a cultural interest, if you're into K-pop or Korean dramas or fashion or food, whatever, learn the language to really uh, understand the culture and even uh, if you just want to go there to study at university even if you want to study in english it's good to learn some korean language this will make life in korea so much easier and more enjoyable to take a korean language course is also a good way to experience life in korea maybe you're curious about korea maybe you want to take a longer program there but actually you've never been to korea before um, and I worked with studying abroad for so many years. And one thing I know is that as a student, you paint a picture of it in your mind. Oh, it's going to be so great to go to Korea. It's going to be like this. And then when you come there, it will be like this. It will be different. It might not be worse, but it will always be different than you expected. Uh, so before maybe signing up for a long four-year program, you should at least travel to Korea once and preferably do a language course to really get to know the country a bit. Uh, and Korean language, as I said, was, is the prerequisite to most university programs in Korea. If you study language in Korean universities, uh, there are four semesters per year and each semester is 10 weeks long. And the two semesters, 20 weeks is minimum to get a student visa, for example. Uh, and uh, you will need a high school diploma to study on the student visa in Korea. So you must have graduated from high school to go to a Korean university on the student visa. And you must show a bank statement with at least 10,000 US dollar in funding, again, in order to get a student visa in Korea. There are other study options there, but for most long-term programs, you will need a, uh, student visa and then you need this high school diploma and this uh, bank statement and uh, we'll look closer to that, at that as well higher education in korea if you want to study in english you can either do this study abroad semesters right you go for one or two semesters and you can take like one marketing course one it course one psychology course and one fashion course just try different subjects experience life in korea often you can also take a small language course parallel if you want to take a full degree in Korea, the selection is rather limited. Most universities uh, only offer some liberal arts programs in English if they offer full degrees in English at all. At master level, they might be more common, uh, but we can't really help you with English masters in Korea since none of our partner universities offer that for us. Uh, if you want to study in Korean, on the other hand, there are many opportunities. Then you can study basically everything, you know, automobile, medicine, whatever you have there. But you will need Korean language at at least topic three level. Topic is a Korean language test. And the, the topic three level is equivalent to at least 30 weeks long language course. So this is the requirement, but I would recommend actually to learn Korean to an even higher level, at least topic four, just to be able to keep up with the tuition in the universities. Now we will have a closer look at different schools. Uh, the first one, Lexis Korea, is a pure language school, a private language school. So this one differs quite a bit from the rest. 
uh, and it's much more flexible. They have campuses in Gangnam, in Seoul, and also in downtown Busan. And here you can take practical language courses. Uh, and the main advantage of Lexis is that they have very flexible dates, start dates and course lengths. You can, when there's no pandemic, you can start basically every Monday and you can study for two weeks or 12 weeks or 24 weeks or 15 weeks. Here you don't have these fixed semesters, so it's very flexible. Uh, and they also organize a lot of uh, activities they can have guided walks in Seoul, they have a Korean barbecue night, they have karaoke night, maybe they visit a Korean TV station and they often uh, get involved in society in very different ways and really focus on practical language usage, talking Korean, talking to Koreans. Uh, the drawback is that they can't sponsor a student visa. Uh, so to study at Lexis, um, you would need uh, uh, working holiday visa or just a visa waiver, which we'll talk more about later, but none of those are available right now during the pandemic. But otherwise, Lexis is a great school if you want to go on like a shorter summer course to Korea or if you just want to experience Korea for a while. And we can help you apply to Lexis in Korea as long as you're able to travel to Korea on visa waiver or working holiday visa. Um, then we have the universities. Konkuk University in Seoul is one of our partner schools. Uh, and here you can take language courses from 20 to 80 weeks, divided into 10 week semesters. And the price for 10 weeks for one semester is 1,700,000 Korean won. So quite a lot of zeros there, but it's equivalent to roughly 1,500 US dollars uh, per 10 week semester. Uh, you can also take degree programs in Korean, but then again, you need at least topic three level first. Uh, and um, Konkuk can sponsor student visas. So you can go to Korea and stay there during your entire studies there. And after half a year, you'll also have the right to work in Korea. So of course, student visa is the best option for long-term studies. And we can help you apply to the language courses at Konkuk University. Uh, and when you apply through us, you can also, also save 100,000 Korean won since you don't need to do the interview with the school. Uh, if you want to study at a degree program in Konkuk, you can get help with that directly from the KLI, the Korean Language Institute. So first you study the language, and then when you're at the language school, they help you apply for the degree programs. Uh, and I visited this campus, I actually took this picture also that we have here, so it's a very lovely campus, it's on the green line in Seoul, uh, very central north of the river, uh, but that uh, line goes around, I think even down to Gangnam and to most of the major stations there, and they have their own lake on campus as we see here, so quite nice university I have to say, um, decently high ranking also. Uh, if you want to study in a smaller place, maybe you're a bit intimidated by Seoul, you know, this giant city, if you're from a smaller place at home, or if you're short of money, you can also choose Yongnam University. Uh, here we can help you with the same things as uh, at Konkuk, language courses, 20 to 80 weeks, but as you see, the prices is lower, 1.3 million Korean won, about 1,150 US dollar per semester instead. Uh, so you save 350 US dollar per semester. And living costs will also be lower here since you will be in a smaller town. But they also offer degree programs in Korean, just the same way we can help you with the language courses. And once you're there, they can help you to apply to the degree programs. Uh, they can also sponsor a student visa uh, and it is a smaller city close to the nature. Yongnam University is located in a city called Yongsan. I've also been there visiting the campus, but I didn't take this picture. Um, and Yongsan is really a student city, small, nice city, very green, as you see here. Uh, but it's located close to Daegu. And Daegu has an international airport. It's the fourth largest city in, in Korea. 
and you can reach um, you can reach Busan quite quickly by train. I think maybe forty minutes something, and even Seoul not so far with a quick train. It's like one hour twenty minutes or something, if I remember correctly. Uh, so they can be an interesting option too for language courses. Uh, otherwise, if you want to take a degree programs, summer courses, or study abroad semesters in English, we can offer that at Hankook University or in Seoul or Hanyang University's Ansan, Ansan campus. Um, and you can take a gap year or study abroad semesters and you see the price here, 2,290 euros per semester. And the partner who helped you to apply there is charging euros. But again, compared to many other countries, this is a very reasonable tuition fees. And gap year is if you come directly from high school, if you're not enrolled in the university at home, then you can do a gap year and take beginner level courses in many different subjects, go for fun for one or two semesters. While study abroad is for students who are enrolled uh, in a university in their home country, then you can go and do one or two semesters in Korea and count it towards your degree at home. You can also do a full bachelor's degree uh, in English at uh, Hankook University of Foreign Studies, mostly liberal arts subjects there. Uh, I think there's some business subjects, something language related like international relations, three or four programs like that where you can take the full degree. And you can also take summer courses in English. Uh, and here you get the help with the full application from our partner. Uh, so if you fill out an info request at uh, dreamstudiesabroad.com, we will put you in touch with them. They help you with everything free of charge before your course starts. And uh, coming through us, you also get an extra 40 euro discount with the code DREAMSTUDIES. That's actually a discount code you can try in many places. We have discounts from schools and accommodation providers in many places around the world. You can read more about that in dreamstudiesabroad.com too. Uh, scholarships for studying in Korea. Well, I don't have so good news for you because scholarships are unusual for language courses and for programs in English, which is exactly what you're interested in. Um, language schools seldom give those. And again, programs in English, they get the applicants anyway. So it's, uh, it's not impossible, but they're not common. You can apply for Dream Study Scholarship for 1,000 euro to, if you want to study in Lexis, Yongnam or Konkuk University. Um, otherwise, the best scholarships are for programs taught in Korean. There you can get much bigger scholarships. For example, Konkuk University offers 30% uh, um, the first semester for students who have achieved topic three level, 40% if you have achieved topic four and so on up to 60% for topic six. And after the first semester at Konkuk University, you can get between 20 and 100% scholarship for the tuition fee based on your previous semester GPA. So if you study in Korean, it will most likely be cheaper, at least if you're a high performing student, and, but you will still need money to cover your living costs and usually a part of the tuition fee. Uh, student accommodation. Uh, the most common options are living in a school's residence or living off campus in a share house. Uh, almost all universities have their own residences where you live in dorms on campus. Usually you share a room with one other student. And of course, it's always very convenient to live on campus. You have walking distance to classes. You can often get a meal package included, uh, all those kind of things. The drawback is that they have a curfew. Most university um, dormitories uh, are locked between one o'clock at night and five o'clock in the morning. So if you're gonna wanna go out party in the evening, you either have to come home early or stay out very late. Uh, so if you want to be more independent, you can uh, choose to live in a share house um, off campus instead. And then you basically share an apartment with other students. You can have your own single room or you can have a double room that you share with another student or even multi bedrooms. And then of course you will share bathrooms, kitchens, and those common areas. 
Uh, a school like Lexis also offer more types of accommodation. For example, there you can stay with a Korean host family, which is awesome if you really want to learn the language or, and if you want to live like a Korean, eat uh, fantastic Korean food. And you can also both through Lexis and on your own stay in something called Goshivon, a very Korean kind of accommodation, as you can see on the picture here. Uh, this is a photo I took when I visited Korea some, I think that's more than five years ago. Goshi Won basically is kind of a mini studio uh, where you have your own small, small bathroom and desk and bed and not much more on like four square meters. So you shouldn't be claustrophobic if you want to live there. But the advantage is it's quite cheap and they have great locations. For example, this one was in Gangnam. Let me see if we have a chat question. I read that the school's resident might close during holidays. Yeah, some, um, some school residence is closed during holidays. Uh, so you would have to move out while others don't. It's a bit different between different schools. I don't think uh, um, that Konkuk uh, closes during the holidays, but we can double check that and get back to you. Uh, and we also have a website um, where, um, uh, where I can read a bit more about uh, accommodation options in Korea and uh, make an info request about these share houses. Uh, this is yourhomeinkorea.com. And we work with a share house company called Borderless Korea, where again, you can get a nice discount on your monthly rent if you mention the discount code Green Studies. Uh, visas, that's a very important part when you study abroad. Uh, so let's have a closer look at this. Let me see. Yeah. Um, most commonly you study on a student visa and they're called the D2 visa for degree programs and it's D4 visa for language courses at university. And this is usually the best option for you. But again, as I mentioned, you need those 10,000 US dollars, you will need to have graduated from high school to show that diploma. Um, otherwise, for a school like Lexis, for example, you can go on visa waiver. Uh, and depending on your nationality, if, if your country even have a visa waiver agreement with Korea, you will be able to stay there between 30 and 90 days. Some nationalities, I think Canadians can even stay up to 180 days if they do some small prolongation there. So this is basically like the tourist visa, you just go to Korea with no no preparation, you get a stamp in your passport uh, on arrival. So it's perfect for short courses at Lexis, for example. There's also a working holiday visa, uh, which lasts one year. And again, for selected nationalities that have this agreement with Korea. Um, and finally, there's an F4 family visa. If uh, you are of Korean heritage, so maybe one of your parents or grandparents are Korean citizens, then you should be eligible for this uh, F4 visa. And this is the best visa you can get to Korea. Uh, it can be easier to get than the D visas and uh, it also gives you more rights. You could stay longer in Korea, you could work with less limitations and so forth. Uh, on the D4 or on the D visas in general, you're allowed to work after six months. After studying there for six months, you can work if you get the permission from your school. So basically, if you keep up with your stu studies being a good student, then the school can give you the approval to work if you have a D visa. On visa waiver, you're never allowed to work. That would be illegal. Uh, on the working holiday visa, you can obviously work with certain limitations and on F4 visa, you can work with even fewer limitations. Uh, let's see, we have another question here. Uh, I'm planning to study the language and degree program. Do I apply for both visas? Um, yeah, it will be while, while you're on the language course, you will have a D4 visa and then the university will help you to change to a D2 visa once you're in Korea. Anyway, nowadays, usually they only issue the visa for half a year at a time. And then if you continue to study at the school, they will renew it for you. And if you have changed program, they will change the visa type. That's usually quite easy on site. 
but then of course right now we have this uh, COVID also. So as the situation is now in May of 2021, um, the only visa that you can enter Korea on is student visas, D4, well, of course, D2 also, but the D visas and the F visas are the ones available for most nationalities. Uh, citizens of the UK, US and Japan should still be able to come on visa waiver, but other nationalities like Swedes, for example, me, we can't come on visa waiver now. Uh, right now, and also no working holiday visas are issued, as far as I understand, during the pandemic. Uh, and there's also at the moment a 14 days quarantine and co in Korea, quarantine and COVID test requirements. But I saw something just the other day there that, um, yeah, they will loosen this up a bit if you can prove that you have the full vaccination there. So these uh, kind of COVID rules, they change kind of all the time, but basically students with a student visa have been able to go through to Korea through basically all the pandemic. And it should just get easier, especially if you have a vaccination and the more people get vaccinated around the world. So hopefully everything works out there. But uh, if you apply through us, we will keep you updated. And we also have an, an article on our website about student visas to Korea. Uh, so there you, We'll find uh, more information and we try to update it when we get any major news on the COVID situation there. So who can get help from Dream Studies to study in Korea? Well, anyone is welcome to use the free articles and resources about studying in Korea that we have on our website. As I said, we have one school page with a uh, uh, 30, 40, 50 universities in Korea and lots of articles. You can we have an article about studying in Korea. We have articles about language courses in Korea, FAQ about them. We have student stories. We have student visa article to Korea and so forth. So a lot of free information there available for everyone. And we can help you with the application to one of the schools included in this presentation but we cannot help you to apply to other schools or programs in Korea. So if you want to study at uh, uh, Seoul National University, Yonsei University or Kyunghee University or some other school there, then we can't help you more than with the free resources we have here. We also have a study abroad handbook you can download and so forth, but we can't actively help you with the application. And we cannot help you to apply to Korean universities if you don't have a high school diploma, since this is the prerequisite. Or actually, there's an exception to this. If you would have a bachelor's degree instead, then, of course, we can help you. But you need a degree, at least a, a diploma degree from high school or from a university. And to study on a student visa, you will need those 10,000 US dollars. Basically, the main requirements to get accepted for most nationalities is to have this high school diploma and to be able to show that you have the required funding. Let me see, one more question. Uh, if I'm planning to study uh, yeah, um, A-level certificate, yeah, uh, UK A-levels, that should be equivalent to um, to um, high school diploma, so A levels are fine. Uh, and otherwise, the last one there: if your nationality don't have a visa waiver agreement with Korea, so you can't come there as a tourist without complicated applications. And if you don't have a working holiday agreement with Korea, well, then we can't help you to Lexis because you will not be able to get in there. And even most of our other partner schools uh, don't allow us in their agreements to help uh, students who don't have access to this uh, these visa waiver or working holiday. On the other hand, that means we can help all students from Europe, uh, almost all students from Americas, Oceania, many, uh, many East Asian countries but uh, we can't actively help everyone. It depends on the visa situation and our agreements with the schools there. Let me see some questions. You don't understand the $10,000 rule. Well, that's a rule that the 
um, that is required by Korean authorities to get a student visa, you must prove that you have the funding to pay for your course and for your living expenses in Korea. So you must be able to show that you have enough money to, to pay for your costs in Korea. Otherwise, they will not let you in because these are student visas, right? So you, they don't want you to abuse the right to go to Korea and maybe work there. You must pay for your tuition fee and be able to pay for your living costs. So without uh, those money, you will not get a student visa. If, however, your nationality has uh, access to visa waiver or working holiday, you can still go on those visas without any money requirements at all. And there you can take either like 20 weeks at Konkuk University uh, on a working holiday visa or go to Lexis for 10 weeks or something, that is fine. Uh, which universities we're partnered with? In Korea, it's the ones we have shown in this presentation. We're working to get more partnerships there, but we work with an Konkuk University in Seoul, Yongnam University in Yongsan, Daegu, um, Hanyang University, Ansan, Hankook University, Seoul, and then Lexis Private School. At the moment, those are the schools where we can help you that we work with in Korea. So, and let's have a closer look at the steps to study in Korea. Um, First of all, if you want our help, fill out an info request at dreamstudiesabroad.com. Then we will send you our study abroad handbook. Uh, we will send you a special info sheet about studying in Korea. Uh, and we will also um, send you application information about the program and the school that you're interested in. For example, Konkuk University. Um, yeah, I already did step two. Uh, and then uh, once you receive this, decided, oh, I want to study at Konkuk, then you fill out the application form. It's usually two pages, quite easy to fill in application forms, but then you will need a passport copy, you will need your high school diploma, you will need your bank statement for these $10,000. Uh, and uh, I think there's some other document you need, but it's not so complicated and we have detailed instructions for you and can help you answer any questions there. Uh, then after you get accepted, you will pay for your course. If you apply well in advance, you don't have to pay right away, but you will need to pay before you can get your visa documents. Uh, so at least some um, two or three months before the course starts, you need to pay your tuition fee. Then the school will send us your visa documents. We send them to you and you go to the Korean embassy in your country um, to get your student visa if you're on a visa course. Uh, then you can book your accommodation either in the university residence um, or off campus, as we showed you different options there. And when you get the visa documents from the school, you go to the embassy, as I mentioned, in your country to do the final visa application. And usually, for most nationalities, this is quite easy once you got the visa documents there, but the rules can differ from country to country and with the politics and with COVID, obviously, all those kind of things factor in there. Uh, then after you get your visa, you book the trip to Korea, get a student insurance is very important. You find good advice about student insurances on our website as well, but it's very important to be protected when you study abroad. If you get sick or if you get something stolen or if you cause some damage or whatever happens and your university will also demand that you have an international student insurance. So they will ask you to show that one before your classes start. And finally, pack your bags and go to Korea. So, kam sam ni da. I would need to go to Korea and take a language course myself, as you can hear. Uh, so to get more help from us, you fill out our information request form. Uh, we will also send you some more information about studying in Korea after this webinar. And yes, now I'm available for more questions. I have one here. Do I need to pay the entire price of the course when payment is required? Uh, you will need to pay usually, if you sign up for a course that's one year or longer, you would need to pay for the first year at most schools. Uh, otherwise, minimum would be 20 weeks. For example, Yongnam, usually you can could be enough to pay for 20 weeks. 
but usually you pay for the first year. But of course, if your course is shorter than one year, yeah, then you pay for a shorter period of time. Uh, but then also your visa documents will only stay, you will only get visa documents for the time period you have paid and 20 weeks is the minimum. Uh, every first semester starts on September. Well, when it comes to language courses, you have four starts per year. That's, uh, uh, let me see now, it's um, March, uh, March, uh, June, September and uh, December, but yeah, the main undergraduate start date is September. I think that's true. And then some courses in January. Um, are you going to help out with the university track? Um, one university only. Um, as I said, if you want to study language at university, then you only apply to one. It's usually not hard to get accepted. If you want to study um, university in Korean language, then your language school can help you with the application there. Uh, and if you want to study in English, we can help you to Hankook Hanyang University. Uh, it's the same, same partner, same application. So you should choose which one. Uh, next question, what is the values of A-levels for getting into universities? Uh, for language courses, it's just to have graduated. Basically, that's, uh, for language, they don't really look at your grades. They just see, want to see that you have graduated. That's the basic requirement. While if you apply for different programs, that will differ between each university, each program, each start date. So I can't really tell uh, what kind of grades are needed for different programs at different schools. That's up to the school you apply for there. Uh, can we get a scholarship even without having the topic three level? Uh, well, if you want to study in Korean, you will need to have topic three level to get accepted. So there you cannot do it. And as I mentioned, there are very few scholarships available for degrees in English and for language courses. For language courses, you can apply for dream study scholarship, but that's 1000 euro uh, per year. And of course, uh, that's given to one student. So it's just a small portion there. Otherwise you will need your own funding there at least until you can start a program in Korea and get a bigger scholarship. But even then you need to pay for your living uh, costs. So there's no full scholarships um, that we are aware of. I think there's some we write about in our study in Korea article where you can apply through like Korean embassy or uh, I heard there are a few cases of students who got accepted in a Korean university but couldn't get a visa. And do you think this is more likely to happen because of COVID? Um, um, not, well, they might be even pickier, but uh, usually if you fulfill your COVID requirements, that shouldn't play, play much of a part there. Uh, from my experience, like with the Swedish students we help, they almost never have problem getting visas there. Then it is tougher to get visas for the countries um, where you don't have the visa waiver agreements because they do a closer check there. Um, so, I mean, it's fully possible that you get accepted by your school, but um, denied by by the embassy, but usually if you can show you have the funding, if you can show that your intention is to study, and if you haven't abused the Korean visa in the past, you should have a very good chance of getting it. And after COVID, of course, things should only get better. For a student with 61% in undergraduate, which converts to 2.3 out of four, with a decent work with experience, would getting accepted to a post-grad be difficult again, would be from university to university. It probably would be difficult in high-ranking universities like, you know, Yonsei, Seoul National and those. Uh, but if you consider the non-so-high-ranking universities, it should definitely be possible, I think. But then again, uh, I, I don't work with, uh, with the post-grads programs in Korea, and it's always like the application process is a closed box to me. So... I can't say the, the exact uh, requirements different universities have for the degree programs. Uh, I like to start by studying a language course for three semesters. Yeah, that's usually a very good start. 
Um, so I pay for three semesters and then I decide to take one more semester. Is it feasible? Yes, that's quite doable. Uh, so you just sign up for three semesters and uh, if you want to prolong on site, it's no problem, except you will need to prolong your visa, but the school will help you with that. Um, in that case, I would handle the extension of the visa course with the university directly. That is correct. Uh, basically, we help you with uh, most things until you start your program in Korea. You send the application to us. Uh, we tell you what to do step by step uh, all the way. Uh, but then once you're in Korea, you deal directly with the university staff. And also after your course is paid, we will also give you a contact person directly in Korea. And when it comes to visas, for example, we will send you the visa documents with some instructions, but you have to apply for the visa yourself in person in your embassy. Uh, let me see. I want to take um, both language course and then degree program. May, may I know the process such as payment and visa? Uh, it's basically, as we said now, it's quite straightforward if you take both of them. First, you apply for a language course and pay for the language course. You pay for the number of weeks you sign up for. So if you want to get topic 30, you sign up for at least 30 weeks, pay for those, apply for a D4 visa. Uh, we will guide you through this. And then once you're in Korea, you apply for the degree program in Korea. And if you're accepted, they will help you to change the visa in Korea and you will pay for the degree program year by year in Korea. And there you have the good chances of getting more scholarships based on your topic score and later on GPA. And what is the best way to learn Korean? Well, definitely the best way is to study at the language school in Korea. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but we also have um, articles on our website about the best, uh, best ways to learn different languages. And of course, nowadays, apps are very good. Uh, listening to music, listening to TV programs are very good. And um, definitely teaching yourself Hangul, which is one of the most um, logical alphabets in the world. Uh, that's a great start. But there's no better way than to learn it at a school in Korea. Because um, the teachers are native Korean. Uh, whose only task profession is to teach foreigners to speak and write Korean language. And once you leave the classroom, you're surrounded by Korean. So you will learn very, very quickly by studying Korean in Korea. Uh, do we have any more questions? Uh, and for accommodation, is it going to be arranged with the school when taking a language course? Uh, you have several options there. Uh, depending on the language, um, yeah, where you take the language uh, uh, course to begin with. If you take it at university, you can live in their dormitories. As I mentioned, they have these curfews, but apart from them, it can be a, that it can be a good option. Uh, and then uh, you can either mention it in your application and we can let the school knew, know and book it that way, or you book it directly with the school in a later stage. Otherwise, as I mentioned, we can help you with discounts on shared apartments in Seoul. And of course, if you want to go to Lexis, for example, then they have many accommodation options that are all booked directly through us and the school. And does taking a language course in Korea first and then applying for postgrad in a university directly be better? Well, it can be a good start. Partly you get to experience life in Korea and by knowing some Korean language, um, yeah, you will have a better time in Korea. But then, of course, if you want to take the postgrad directly after, then you might need to take a longer language course because uh, I think the application period would close sometime in April or something while the courses probably start in September. But otherwise, we always recommend doing a language course first. It's very beneficial whether you want to work in Korea, whether you want to learn, get to know Koreans, get to know the culture, and yeah, maybe even take some courses in Korean. Any more questions? Otherwise, I will thank you a lot for listening and attending this seminar, webinar. And uh, we will also make it available online and we will send some more information by email and you can get back to us if you're interested in applying to any of these schools, you can send an email 
to us, let us know which schools and we will send you the application documents or you can just fill out the information request on at the dreamstudiesabroad.com. So thank you very much for listening. Do you dream of studying abroad? But you're not sure how and where to go. That's why we're here. Dream studies abroad to help you out reaching your goal. So many schools from all around the world are welcoming you with their open doors. Live your dreams and travel the world. A new journey for the brighter future. Let's talk study abroad today. Your dream is.